Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about... Ugh. All right, Godot is hard enough to say because there's multiple different pronunciations, but when you replace the G with the Q, it gets even harder. We'll call this Q dot. I'm going to call it Q dot for the rest of this. If there's a proper pronunciation, I apologize. It's Q dot from now on because I don't know how to put that little silent O in there. Otherwise, it'd be Quo dot, which is a dumb name. Anyways, if you ever wanted to work with Quake maps and Quake workflow, but in the Godot game engine, uh, Q dot is perfect for you. Basically, it is Godot plus Quick. You put those two things together and you have Quo Dot or Q Dot, whatever it's called. Uh, so here you can see I am in Trench Broom. This is a quick uh, CSG style uh, mapping tool. It's the traditional way of creating maps in Quick. So you can see here, a lot of times it's primitives basically carved out of other shapes. There's texture mapping going on. We've got this clipping wall right here. And then what I'm going to do is jump on over to Godot. And there you see, using the power of Q dot or Q dot or whatever the hell it is, here it is imported into the Godot game engine just with the superior lighting and effects going on. Uh, but And you can see that clipping plane is actually available here, but it's a collision shape once imported. Uh, so it's a set of scripts and such that runs that allows you to automatically import .map files that you created in your favorite uh, quick editing tool. Now, uh, Trent Broom, I believe it is called, is the uh, preferred mechanism. Let's head on back over here. So yeah, it's Trench Broom. Uh, when you get, when you go ahead and download um, Q dot or Q dot or whatever, uh, if you go into the extras folder right here, you will find a uh, trench broom folder right here. Basically, you want to drop the contents of that into the trench broom itself uh, So it will define a new game type in trench broom So when you're in trench broom, you can then come into view and then preferences and You'll see that um, Q dot is now an option there Set your game path or the projects you're working with from Godot And then you can now work you make your maps in the one tool and then have them automatically re import in the other tool When it comes down to it once you are on the Godot side of things the magic class of all things basically is this map Define this Q dot map that's defined here You basically come on in here tell it the map file and the settings you want to work with and then you can have it Import the maps for you now if you want to go ahead and get started with this guy There's two ways to go about it the uh, one way is to basically come into Godot Go into the asset library and search for Q dot and then you'll find that it's an option right here Just go ahead download and install it once you've got it downloaded and installed basically go into your project go to your project settings over to the plugins folder over here and make sure that the status is enabled or active like so and then you are ready and off to the races you can now um, have it basically do the modeling in your favorite old school BSP map editor and then you can have it export out and run in Godot so if you want to create that Quake style game but run it in the Godot game engine this is the perfect tool for you um, and it's, again, pretty easy to get up and going. Now, the other way you can grab it is probably even easier, and you can get the samples that way. So we'll head on back over here. You can see this is available on GitHub. I will link this in the linked article down below. Uh, and then what you can do, basically, just come on in here, clone this repository, and then import it into Godot. And it will come then with sample maps that you can get started with. So you'll see under the Scenes folder, uh, there's a Q dot or whatever it's called. Example right here, sample map you can start it with. That's actually what we are looking at right here. So it's a good place to start, gets you everything pre-configured and gives you a map to work and play with. But once you've got that set up, you've now got a Godot scene. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can come in here and start creating, um, you know, new shapes. I could create a, um, I can import my own meshes or my own characters or animations or whatever and start defining my game as a result. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basic idea behind it. It's a pretty cool project on the whole, especially if you're into that uh, retro quake look. Um, so on top of that, let's see a couple more details. So it is available hosted on GitHub. The project is under the MIT license. As you saw, it's already exported out to the um, asset library for Godot, making it very easy to import. Uh, it was actually just updated just like yesterday, I think it was. So uh, version 1.5.0 was released two days ago uh, with several new features. So you can see it's very much actively under development. So 11 days ago, they did a release. Uh, 15 days ago, and so on. So this is a very uh, actively releasing project. Uh, so if you want to keep your eye on it, it's 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 a cool one. Uh, and give it some time. It's still fairly young, so it's really only 20 days old, but you're seeing 
pretty rapid revisions going on here. So you're seeing a lot of improvements in a very short period of time. So it may not be full features yet, but it's definitely the genesis of a very cool project. And if you're in one of those, you're seeing like, basically if you look in Steam or whatever, there's a lot of retro throwback first person style shooters that are built on the Quake engine. This enables you to do the same sort of thing, but you're using Godot instead. On top of that, it's actually already got some pretty good documentation as well, which is pretty cool. So there's a Wikipedia page for it. Sorry, there's a wiki for it. Uh, off of their their website here um, and you see you got documentation on how that um, that map works that's remember that class I told you was kind of key to all of it it is well documented at the same time if you want to bring in to trench broom uh, the trench broom documentation is also here to show you how to set up that thing I showed you earlier on it shows you which files to copy over and how to get things up and running and then on top of that we've got things like dealing with textures and materials we've got things on static light baking um, the file formats in general and so on. So it's a well-documented system already too. And it's again, being rapidly iterated. And finally, if you want to, uh, Trench Broom is the level editor that is ideally used for it. I actually haven't worked with Quake Maps in Eon, so I don't know what the best tool out there is, but this guy seems to have been around for a very, very long time. I found quotes going back like 10 years type thing. So it's a, it's a mature project. If you wanna go ahead and download it, it is easily available. You can see it's also being actively updated uh, 23 days ago. They did this test version and the last version was updated in July the 4th of 2019. Trench Broom itself is available under the GPL v3 license and I will link it down below as well. So if you ever wanted to work in a Quake style format but with the Godot game engine, QDOT or QuoDOT or tell me in below how you would pronounce it because I have no idea. Well anyways, QDOT or Quodot or whatever could be the perfect project for you. So that's why I figured I would share it. Also, let me know what other add-ons for Godot really impressed you that I think I should do a video about and I will keep them in mind for the future. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.